Hi, my name is Nader Momtaz, lead curator for this Liz Guzman post on the Virginia On Air Elections and Governance Hub. We sat down with Liz Guzman, delegate for the 31st House District, for a short interview. We're in the office of Delegate Liz Guzman, a delegate for the 31st House District. Liz, thank you so much for uh, sitting down on this interview with me. Oh no, thank you for allowing me the opportunity to talk to the people who follow your page and your organization. Thank you for having us. Uh, I'll start off by asking, why did you get involved in politics? Well, I think I got involved because I realized that many people who look like me were voiceless and were not represented in the Virginia Assembly. And I'm originally from Peru. I'm an immigrant who became naturalized in 2005. And I think that as an immigrant, we become resilient to so many things. And that includes to accepting uh, racism, to accept, to accept discrimination, to accept profiling, because in the back of your mind, it's like, well, I wasn't born here. But then once you have children and they are born here, they're Americans. So I got involved because of my children. I didn't want them to feel less of Americans just because they are brown or their last name is Guzman. And what has been your most significant accomplishment today? So I am a mother of four children. My oldest child, actually the one who made me move to the States. She's 28, uh, her name is Pamela. And my youngest child is 10 years old. Her name is Hannah. So I live in Prince William County for many years, which is parts of my district. I represent parts of Prince William and Fauquier County. I've been living in my district for the past 15 years, but in Prince William County for more. So I realized the amount of resources that schools were losing throughout the years. So my daughter, oldest daughter has gone to the schools that my younger children are going now. So one thing that caught my attention when I was running is that school resource, sorry, school counselors have uh, lost, we lost a lot of school counselors in the schools. And I learned that in Virginia, a high school counselor, for example, their caseload is 400, 350, but in Prince William County was 450. In middle school was 700 students and in elementary schools was uh, 1,000 students. It wasn't like that 10 years ago. So then I learned that the public education went through a lot of budget cuts throughout the years, and one of the areas that was mostly affected was not only the teachers, because they didn't get a salary increase for over a decade, but also school counselors. They were challenged with uh, their caseload. So uh, school counselors by the Code of Virginia are mandated to have a mental health licensed therapist so they could provide mental health assessments, but they couldn't because of the challenging caseload. So I made a theme of my campaign to reduce those caseloads to 250 students for high schools, and now we pass that legislation. So I think that when I think about that, I think about those students who spend most of their time in the schools and sometimes they have mental health challenges, but they are, don't have anybody to go to or being helped. So now these school counselors are gonna help them. They're gonna help uh, high school students to fill out college applications or to provide vocational surveys, surveys so students know whether they are ready to go to college or not. And what is the most important new legislation you want to patron for the 2020 General Assembly? Well, I've been fighting for three years. It's the Paid Sick Days Act. I made it also learn about this issue at the doors. When I was knocking on doors, one of my constituents told me, you know, thank you for the Affordable Care Act. I'm actually paying for health insurance, but I can use it because I, my employer only gives me two weeks of vacation a year. One is, is to spend time with my children in the spring break, and another one is to spend time with them in the summer. If I wait to use my vacation time to go to the doctor, that means the less time that I will spend of my children. So he asked me, if there's something that you could do for me, please provide paid sick days so people could go to the doctor. So I made that also a priority for my campaign, 
I introduced legislation in 28, the 2018 and 2019 session that actually was killed on party line votes. And I'm excited that at least this year it turned into study. So into study means that we are going, we're talking right now with the stakeholders and with members across the aisle to look uh, at my bill and find ways to make it into a legislation. So the bill is called the Paid Sick Days Act that will provide 40 hours of paid sick time to employers who have six or more employees and they can use this time uh, to go to the doctor themselves, to talk, to take their children to the doctor, to take their parents, because many of us are in the sandwich generation mm -hmm. and we actually had to take care of our parents mm -hmm. or to go themselves to the doctor. And I think it's good for educators because then you won't see children going to school sick because they parents sometimes have to make that decision because they can stay home with them. Mm -hmm. And anytime they miss from work, it's less time that they will uh, less money on their paycheck is good for businesses because if you realize when you are in a restaurant and you have a waiter or a waitress sick that is providing actually food to the people who is in the restaurant then that is I think it's not good for the business either and I think it's good for Virginians you know because they will have access to preventive care and even if they are Medicare or Medicaid recipients you know, it's less money that the state and the federal government is going to spend because they will have access to preventive care. Uh, it, it is not good that we live in a state where at least 1.2 million Virginians do not have access to any type of paid sick time. And that is right. paid, and that is not acceptable. Right. And what is the question you are most frequently asked and, asked and how do you reply to the question? So uh, many people don't know that the legislator uh, job is a part-time job, even though you see me everywhere in the community every day, actually I only get paid part-time. I do have a full-time job mm -hmm. where I work uh, 40 hours and I'm also a mother of four children, as I was telling you earlier. And so people constantly ask me, how do you do it? How do you juggle, you know, multiple responsibilities? And what I, even when I decided to run for office, I was asked that question because it was a field that was mostly nominated, I mean, mostly men will do this job, not women. So in my mind was if a male is doing it, a woman can do it too, you know, because I'm sure that many of the legislators who serve there have, a full, have another job because they cannot live with $18,000 a year and they have children too. So if they can do it, I could do it too. So when I ask, I, and they ask me, how do I do it? I would say that I have to be very disciplined with my time, but then I don't want to sacrifice my children in the process either. So if there's an activity for my children where I, my son or my daughter is going to get an award, I want to be there. You know, so I block my calendar and I, and my staff know that that's sacred time that I have to be there for my children. But then um, at the same time, I think what it keeps me going is my children. You know, I'm trying to change uh, the future for them. So when they see people who actually look like them and you have more diverse representation, these children could believe that they could accomplish anything they want. Right. And what would you recommend to students about wanting to get more engaged with the democratic process? Well, I would start by saying first to parents, that because we uh, the best gift that you can give to your son or your daughter is to drive them to the DMV to be to register so they could get registered to vote. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the, your first civic duty and most important. You know, and then after that, I will say participate on the elections. In Virginia, we have an election every year. So the first Tuesday of November, there's always an election. And there are elections that are very important to us, like this year, for example. You know, we have el elections for the Virginia Assembly. We have elections, local elections, for Commonwealth Attorney, for Sheriff, for County Supervisors. And these people make decisions about your day-to-day -day life, public education, transportation, criminal justice reform. So it's important that you get out and vote. But after that, I would, after you cast your ballot, for a specific individual or candidate, you know, 
And if you are not happy with that person, of you, if you believe that you can contribute to the process mm -hmm. by uh, helping your elected official to develop policy, that's your opportunity, you know? Once you vote for a candidate that allows, is your right that that person should be accessible to you and should be listened to your concerns and your ideas. So that, that partnership, I think, is that it's what I recommend people to take advantage of after you cast your ballot. All right, well, that concludes the list of questions that I had, but is there anything else you'd like to add for Virginia voters or anyone that's viewing this interview right now? Well, I would like to add that absentee in person is happening right now, so and it's going on until November 2nd. So if you have class, if you have to go to the doctor, if you have to work in the day of the election, you are eligible to absentee in person, and you can vote early right even uh, it's very really easy to qualify as I was explaining earlier and you can vote up to the Saturday before the election if you're gonna or not gonna be available sometime of the day or not of the day at, or out of town you can qualify for that and just to remember to participate in every election I remember this November 5th you are voting for your future you're voting for your family is on the ballot so please come out and make your voices heard. Well, thank you very much. This concludes the interview with Delegate Liz Guzman, Delegate and Candidate for the House District 30, 31. Thank you again for sending on an interview with me. Uh, thank you.